Palmer's Point is the traditional location for port placement in patients with previous surgical history or large pathology. Palmer's Point is located in the midclavicular line, two to three finger breaths below the costal margin. Because of its location overlying the stomach, it's important to remember to have an NG tube or OG tube to suction during trocar placement. While Palmer's Point is helpful, there are disadvantages with this site. One, if Palmer's Point is used for the camera, it's often too far from the target anatomy. Also, due to its location on the left side of the abdomen, visualization of the right side of the pelvis will be difficult if a large uterus is present. Two, the port may become blocked by bowel once the patient is in Trendelenburg, thus limiting its use for insufflation during surgery. Three, due to its location, once operative trocars are placed, it is not uncommon for this port to no longer be used. As an advanced laparoscopic surgeon, we encourage you to limit the number of non-functioning ports for improved cosmetic results. 4. This location cannot be used if there is a history of left upper quadrant surgery including spleen, liver, and stomach. This is becoming a more important consideration as more people undergo gastric bypass procedures. Finally, 5. Injury to the underlying structures like liver or stomach is possible even with proper precautions. Liver injury occurs when unsuspecting hepatomegaly is present, and stomach injury can occur even in the presence of an NG tube. This video of Palmer's point demonstrates the layers passed as the abdomen is entered. Liver injuries at Palmer's Point occur primarily when unsuspecting hepatomegaly is present. Injuries at this location are often difficult to identify because it is an unusual location for liver and it may actually appear similar to the muscular layer on optical entry. Based on our experience with bariatric patients and liver injuries at this location, we now routinely perform a bedside ultrasound in the OR prior to prepping the patient. We look for any liver enlargement and mark it if it is present. We find that this to be particularly essential in morbidly obese patients. For the last two years, instead of using Palmer's Point, we have been using Guan's Point with excellent results. Guan's Point is located midway between the xiphoid and the umbilicus and approximately 1 to 2 centimeters off the midline, which aids in avoiding the falciform. The port can be placed on either the left or the right side depending on the patient. What we like about Guan's Point is that it allows the port to be used the entire procedure as the camera port. In our experience, this location avoids adhesions frequently encountered with previous vertical incisions. Additionally, the layers are similar to the umbilicus, so the anatomy is already familiar to many laparoscopists. Finally, the location virtually eliminates the risk of stomach or liver injury. However, given the location, there are the same risk of major vascular injury as there is with an umbilical port placement, so caution must be exercised. This patient was undergoing a total laparoscopic hysterectomy for endometrial hyperplasia. Her past medical history was significant for morbid obesity with a BMI of 61. Her surgical history was significant for two previous C-sections with vertical incisions. Guan's point is marked on the patient halfway between the umbilicus and the xiphoid, slightly off the midline. We routinely use optical entry with the gas on low flow at Guan's point. The tip is inserted into the incision, and then you will be able to see both the surgeon on the top and the layers of the abdominal cavity below. Once entered, the gas was allowed to fill the abdomen, allowing careful inspection. In this example, the patient was also undergoing a hysterectomy. She had a BMI of 45 and her surgical history was significant for three previous C-sections with vertical incisions, which are marked. Guan's point is then marked with an X slightly off the midline, approximately halfway between the umbilicus and the xiphoid. The midline is then marked with a dashed line. In this video, we have slowed down the entry slightly so that you can appreciate the single muscle layer as it passes by. Once we entered, both the uterus and omentum were densely adhered to the anterior abdominal wall. 
While Palmer's point could have also been used here, by utilizing Guan's point we were able to complete this procedure with only three 5mm incisions and she was discharged home on the same day. Laparoscopic entry must always be determined by the patient's specific history in mind. In patients with extensive surgical history, do not be tempted to continue to use the same entry technique that you are comfortable with. This patient was referred for a laparoscopic myomectomy. She had an extensive surgical history mostly due to complications of her Crohn's disease. Her surgical history included an exploratory laparotomy with small bowel resection, ileostomy with reversal colostomy, laparoscopic abdominal mesh placement for a ventral hernia, and a laparoscopic cholecystectomy. Preoperative imaging showed the mesh to occupy most of the anterior abdominal wall and you can see multiple metal tacks present. Intraoperatively, the patient's abdomen was marked to determine the location for entry. An ultrasound was performed in the OR which showed her liver to be enlarged and below the costal margins and this area was marked. The yellow line represents the estimated location of the abdominal mesh. The ileostomy, current colostomy, and the small bowel resection incisions were also marked. We theorized that the location with no markings was likely to have the least amount of adhesion, so the decision was made to enter in the right upper quadrant in the location of the blue circle. We used an OptiView trocar and entered under direct visualization. In this case, we were able to see the trocar in one of the small areas free of bowel. You can see the multiple loops of bowel throughout the abdomen. Inspection of the abdomen actually revealed that the extensive adhesive disease was through the entire abdomen and the pelvic anatomy was not even visible. In conclusion, preoperative ultrasound should be performed in morbidly obese patients, particularly if the left upper quadrant entry is being considered.